Hi, it's Sally Clarkson again, and I'm going to be trying a little experiment in the next few weeks to see how you like blogs. I'm going to be talking about some things that a lot of women have talked to me about. Many of you know I've had conferences for many years, over 15 years, and we have 15 years of videotapes and talks of encouragement and biblical instruction, and so we're going to try to give some of these talks and I'm going to try to give you some of my stories online so that those of you who can't come to conferences can actually see a little bit of the message that God has put on my heart. And again, I just, I love encouraging moms because I had so little help along the way when I was a young mom. And I just hope that some of the messages that I share from my heart can help you as the Lord has really helped me. But tonight, I just want to address a tiny bit about the myth of the perfect mom. And if you have women in your life who are acting as though they have it all together, it'll just be a matter of time until they'll stumble again. I, I know one of my friends was talking to me recently about, you know, Sally, I struggle so much in my marriage. I love my husband, but um, we just are at odds in so many areas. And I keep thinking someday I'll be mature. And I said, well, I struggle all the time with that. Clay and I are extremely different. And um, so both of us have all of our lives had to really work at accepting each other's differences, looking at each other's personalities as different. And I really believe that God gives you husbands and children so that you can be sanctified. And sanctification is the process of God chipping off all of the rough edges of your life so that you will actually look more and more like Jesus until you go to see him face to face. And, um, you know, really, if anybody knew my life and how hard it's been and just how imperfect I am, they would never accuse me of being perfect or of trying to be perfect. And someone said, but you light all those candles and drink all that tea and put on soft music and it sounds like a heavenly place. And I think, you know, for me, in order to for me to feel okay about my chaotic and loud and uproarious life, I feel like a part of the glory of God working through women and hopefully through me is to tame my environment so that my soul will feel better about all of the cacophony that I find in my home. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit about that tonight, because I feel like so many women I know, number one, um, just have this expectation that someday if they try hard enough or get the right day timer or planner or the right philosophy or buy the right book or right curriculum, that they will find a way to tame their lives. And I'm here to tell you that as long as you live in a fallen world with sinful people all about you and everyone in your life is sinful, you're going to have all sorts of challenges and battles because this place that we live is the fallen place. I just want to talk about a few scriptures tonight because I think if women could accept the limitations, number one, it's never going to be heaven. So don't get mad about it. Don't get angry at your little babies for crying. They are not out to thwart you purposefully or purp uh, you know, directly. They're just babies, uh, teenagers are not thinking, I wonder how I can frustrate my mom and make her feel guilty or bad about herself. Um, they're just teenagers. And, um, you know, I could apply that to so many areas. I just wish somebody had told me before not to get angry and upset about not having my expectations fulfilled. If you want to be happier, you need to just accept that this is a long-term run and you will never be perfect, and your children will never be perfect, but it's always better just to be happy in the midst of it, to be joyful, to choose to take joy. And that's why I practice civilizing, bringing light, bringing beauty, affirming with uh, life-giving words, because my soul needs to move in that direction. I, there's several passages I just wanted to talk about tonight in light of that. Um, there, I love in Psalm 103, where God is depicted as a father, and it says that he has compassion on his children because he is mindful that they are but dust. Oh, yeah, look down at Sally. Oh, yeah, well, she's just dust anyway. What did I expect? 
You see, God knows our frame. He knows that we're frail. And he still loves us because to him, we're like his little toddlers. Toddlers are immature at best. And no matter how much we progress in our holiness in this world, we're always still going to struggle with ourself, with um, self-absorption, with um, just our frailty, because we're not in heaven yet. Uh, Jesus said, in this world, you have tribulation. And I looked up tribulation. I was trying to find the root of it. And the root of tribulation is stress. In this world, you have stress. The, the next part is so significant. It says, but take courage. Take courage. We are to make a choice of our will, to take courage, to plant a flag and say, I will be your girl. I will take courage. Uh, and so what that has taught me is that at every obstacle in this obstacle course of life, I say, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What do you want me to know here? Uh, what lesson can I learn? How can I exemplify you here? And I look at life as a long-term obstacle course that are tests where I have the opportunity of making a choice of my will to live by faith, to trust God, to learn what he wants me to learn, to humble myself, and to take courage. Um, we have a God that really absolutely loves us. And uh, I love it that when Jesus looked down the multitude, and I'm part of the multitude of moms out there, women, and it said, and Jesus looked out upon them and he felt compassion upon them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. I don't know about you, but I wasn't trained for this and I wasn't prepared. And so I've, I kept wanting to have more children so I could do it right someday. And um, Jesus looks at your life and he has compassion upon you because this culture doesn't lead us, and he wants to lead us. One more verse I just wanted to share tonight. This is a kind of a conglomeration of a whole bunch of different thoughts, so I hope that in the future you'll put up with all these little thoughts and stories that I have. But in, in uh, Hebrews, it says, We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tested in all ways as we are, and yet he is without sin. And so we have a compassionate high priest. Jesus was tempted and tested, and he says, Oh, my goodness, I know what you're feeling like today when you're impatient. I had to be, I had to be patient with my disciples, or I had to be uh, patient with uh, hunger or weariness or exhaustion, so I know how you feel. We have a high priest who can sympathize with us. So God is on your side, and he wants you to live in grace. Forgive yourself. Just grow. Uh, he is sanctifying you. That means he is making you more like Jesus every day. He's chiseling away those places in your heart that won't bring you happiness. But if you submit yourself to his chisel, you will find freedom and grace. But most of all, I just wanted to pass on an understanding that there is no one who has had an easy life if they have lived well and holy in a fallen world. And so if you're experiencing all sorts of challenges and difficulties, don't become discouraged. God loves you. He is with you. He will teach you. He will help you learn little by little to shape your home into a place where true discipleship can happen. He will give you a love for your home. He will even give you a love for all of those children that are around you. And in the midst of you owning and accepting this position by faith, he will grow and carve and work into your life deep satisfaction, a deep sense of love, and a deep sense of the understanding of his loving and generous commitment to you as he, he is your parent, as you are parenting your children. So I wish you grace. I promise someday I will be more organized and have a more pointed message. But I just wanted to share a little bit of my heart tonight and tell you that there is no perfect mom. And all God wants you to do is to love him and to embrace him and to let him work little by little in the life of your home to bring his reality 
and you will find this one of the most satisfying, amazing um, opportunities to know him that you could ever have had. It is his way. Have a great day. Bye.